What is up, guys? It is the Blue Blood tier, and we are back. We got two national championships to cover in the coming weeks, but we have to start with this Saturday, January 8th. We have the FCS National Championship going down in Frisco, Texas, between Montana State and North Dakota State, in which the Bison are an eight-point favorite currently over the Bobcats in a game that kicks off 11 a.m. Central Time live on ESPN2 this Saturday and man all eyes are going to be on Frisco this weekend as we determine the FCS national champion for fall 2021 and we conclude just a hectic FCS schedule going all the way back to having a full spring season crowning a national champion with this with, with with Sam Houston State and going all the way playing two full seasons in a calendar year man so shout out to all the FCS coaches athletes administrators that found a way to pull this off because it was a feat to, to to behold really and truly but we have a matchup between Arguably the kings of the recent FCS, man. North Dakota State has won just endless national titles since 2012. And then you have one of the hottest teams in the country coming into Frisco this weekend in Montana State, coached by a former Bison himself. And we have as many storylines as you possibly could ask for as a member of the media. But let's start with North Dakota State. Let's set the table here first, man. As North Dakota State enters this one, 13 and 1, and Matt Entz looks to win the Bison's ninth FCS national title and their 17th national championship in school history. Their first since 2019. They're going to be looking to use their powerful rushing attack, their, their stout physical defense to win another national title in the FCS and reclaim that throne. Their playoff run, they've had to go through Southern Illinois, smack them 38-7, to ETSU a 27-3 to blowout, and then, of course, a just an amazing game between James Madison and North Dakota State, 20-14, to sealed off by arguably the best interception in FCS this year, a one-handed snag, and it, it is probably one of the plays of the year in the FCS. Yes. Now for Montana statement enters this one 12 and two and Brett Vigan is going to aim to win their first FCS national title since 1984, their fourth all time going back to their NAIA and D2 titles from the 50s and 70s. But looking to beat his former team. He was a coach on the Bison staff from 1998 to 2013. He's going to be looking to use this explosive rushing offense, opportunistic, stingy defense to pull off a huge national championship upset. And this team has been rolling, defeating UT Martin in the first round 26-7, to beating the defending national champions in Sam Houston State 42-19 to on the road in one of the more shocking games of the playoffs where they absolutely put on a show. And then, of course, beating the runner-ups in last year's national championship in South Dakota State where they had to go up to Montana and that crowd put on a show and they won 31-17. to So they've had a brutal road. And this team is is primed and ready to go for their for this FCS national championship. Now, these programs meeting for the 37th time this weekend, dating back to 1914. Montana State actually leads the series 21-15, but the Bison have won the last three matchups in blowout fashion all coming in the FCS playoffs. So Montana State has a lot to prove. Now, that is, you know, that is the stage for this national championship match matchup in Frisco this, this this upcoming weekend. Now the keys to the game will start with North Dakota State, you know, the higher seed in the playoffs, man, the eight point favorites. And for me, the key should be obvious if if you've watched North Dakota State play football this year. And it's run the football, run it again run it again and show your physicality in the trenches at running back to show how physical you can be because that's how they win games. They're going to run the football down your throat. The defensive front and the offensive front are going to be more physical than you. And that's how they're going to win the football game. And that's going to be the key. Don't, don't shy away from what got you here. You're a physical powerhouse power run team. And you need to continue that this weekend. Now, They've shown the ability to run the football against almost anybody at any time this season, and it's I really love their flexibility and or versatility 
at the running back spot. That's going to have to be a key this weekend. Mix the power that you have with some of your running backs with the finesse speed that you have with others. Match personnel with Montana State. If they load the box and got a bunch of big guys in there, give it to Tameric Williams and let them get outside and make a play. If they if they're light on the front, go ahead and get it to and get it to Hunter Lipke and let them run it right down their throat like you did last weekend against James Madison. Show them how physical and dominating you can be. When you look at this rushing attack, over 270 yards per game this season, over six yards per carry as an entire team for the for over the whole season which is an outrageous mark and over 40 rushing touchdowns this season, second in the FCS. Now they have probably four, they have three running backs. And then of course, Quincy Patterson coming in as a wildcat type um, threat, but to Merrick Williams, Kobe Johnson and Hunter Lipke are going to be the guys that you're going to have to look for this weekend to Merrick Williams, 715 rushing yards this year, over six yards per carry. 12 rushing touchdowns. He is a big play threat, and he is so shifty in the open field. He can make you miss it in a phone booth, man. He is that guy in open space that is going to be a problem for Montana State. Now, for Kobe Johnson, he's similar to that. 565 rushing yards, over five and a half yards per carry, but then the bruiser. The the I, I just the bulldozer of a man that is Hunter Lipke. He was the key last weekend to their win against James Matt or or a few weeks ago when they beat James Madison. They they had no answer for Hunter Lipke. He was averaging over six yards per carry and just pounding it. And James Madison just did not have the depth to stop him. 461 rushing yards this year, over six yards per carry and five rushing touchdowns. And then, of course, you have Quincy Patterson, seven rushing touchdowns, over 500 yards rushing. He's going to be a big play threat as well, and they're going to bring him in in his special packages, of course. And I really have to give a shout-out to Cam Miller and Quincy Patterson for working out this quarterback switch that they made midseason. A lot of people thought Quincy was going to come in and be the guy. He's taking that back seat, but he still can make big things happen when he gets into the football game now like i said matching personnel man you have to hit them with the speed and the finesse but also don't get away from your physicality because that's what makes this bison team move is their offensive line is bigger and more physical than you and they have the running backs to make you pay as well that is going to be a huge key for north dakota state in this matchup now cam miller I can't say enough, man. Listen, I, I, I challenged him. I picked James Madison over North, North Dakota State because I didn't believe in Cam Miller, and he delivered an outstanding performance. And I'm not saying he has to go out there and be a Bryce Young and Eric Berrier and Cole Kelly and air it out, but the number one key word I need to see from Cam Miller is playmaker this weekend, whether it be on the ground, through the air, make something happen, and do not turn the football over. This Montana State defense shines and thrives in those situations where they have a chance to make a turnover happen, and the offense is too good for you to give them extra possessions and solid field position. Now, Miller, though, this season has been solid. Oh, 1,300 passing yards, 13 touchdowns, 230 on the ground, and four rushing. Only three interceptions this year. He's not a big passer, but we've seen the highs and the lows through the playoffs. Now, Southern Illinois, we saw him do it with his legs. Only 88 yards passing in a pick two rushing touchdowns, but he cannot have that type of performance. We need to see the Cam Miller we saw against James Madison, 10 for 19, two touchdowns over 160 through the air, where he doesn't have to air it out, throw it 30, 40 times. But when you have the ball in the air, don't turn it over and make some explosive plays happen to make that defense be a little honest and not creep down in the box and make it difficult for the Bison to run. Now, the other key that I want to mention before we move on to Montana State is the Bison could get a huge threat this weekend. There has been some talk that Christian Watson could see the field in the national championship. Of course, he's been sidelined since that season finale, but this would be huge for the Bison passing attack as this kid is lightning in a bottle and just an absolute athlete in open space. 740 receiving this year and seven touchdowns, almost 20 yards per catch. I think in the playoffs that North Dakota State has really missed his presence on the outside and i really do think if he returns and is fully healthy he can contribute that that really could open up the bison offense in a major major way now on the flip side man on the other sideline montana state and for the key for them and you could pick one of many for them in my opinion but i'm going to go with the guy who has gotten him to this point 
Tommy Mallott has to be a star. Let him shine on the ground. Let him live off the play action deep pass and let this guy take you to the promised land like he's already gotten you to Frisco. He has been the MVP of the playoffs, in my opinion. The best player in the playoffs this this season has been has been Malott, man. You know, McKay transfers right before the week of their first game of the playoffs. No sweat there. They bring him a lot, and he puts on an absolute performance week after week after week, and he has been dominant all throughout the playoffs. And, yes, that tough defense helps, but I, th- I don't think without him a lot, they would have made it this far. And you look at what he's done just in the limited action this year, 461 passing yards, four touchdowns, no turnovers, but 705 rushing yards, six and a half yards per carry, and 10 rushing touchdowns. He has dominated the past two games against Sam Houston State and South Dakota State, in which he's led the Bobcats to outscore the two teams from the the spring championship, 73 to 36, one being on the road against the defending national champion. Now, he thrives off of loaded boxes, play action off the dominant rushing attack, and this rushing attack is going to get a huge piece back in Isaiah Afonzi, who did miss the semifinal game, which Montana State was able, was able to overcome for the most part. But getting Afonzi back 1,500 rushing yards, 6 yards per carry, and 10 rushing touchdowns, it is going to give this Montana State offense a devastating one-two punch between Malott and Afonzi in the backfield. And that's going to be something to really test that front seven for North Dakota State, which has been one of the more consistent and physical in the FCS. But I don't know if they – I mean, this running attack is going to give them some problems. And, of course, Elijah Elliott being that, that little bit of depth at that running back spot – I don't expect to see much from him, but Elijah Elliott could be a factor if if they want to get some fresh bodies in there against this stout North Dakota State front seven. Now, this North Dakota State secondary has been stingy this season. 13 picks to only 11 passing touchdowns allowed, but Lance McCutcheon at the wide receiver spot and Willie Patterson behind them are going to have to play big. When Malott puts it in the air, McCutcheon and Patterson have been there to make plays happen for this for this Bobcast team. Now, can they do it again, though, against a very, very strong secondary for North Dakota State? McCutcheon over 1,100 receiving yards, almost 20 yards per catch and eight touchdowns, while Patterson has 400 yards receiving with four receiving touchdowns. These guys are going to have to get, generate separation, no drops, no mistakes on the offensive side of the football because you cannot – allow North Dakota State just to keep the ball, run it down your throat, and dominate time of possession. So Malat, Afonzi, McCutcheon, all these guys have to have big games, but it's going to start with whether Tommy Malat can be the star that he has been over the first three games of the playoffs. If he is able to live up to the hype and continue this magnificent run through the playoffs, I have no doubt in my mind that Montana State is going to have a great chance to win this game, but they're going to have to have their work cut out for them due to just the physical nature of this North Dakota State defense in which they've already they've already stuffed Quay Holmes, a, a, a Walter Payton Award finalist. They've done it against Cole Johnson in that rushing attack up at, against James Madison. They've done it against some elite offenses as well. So we're really going to see who emerges in this game for Montana State now. For the matchup to watch, I'm going to go with the North Dakota State offensive line against the Montana State front seven. If you had to pick a group that was the strength of either of these teams, what is the bread and butter of these teams? I'm going to go with North Dakota State's offensive line, which is bigger and and more physical than what you've seen from any other FCS team for the most part, and they're going to try to run it down your throat. So that's why they're the key for them. But then Montana State's front seven has been a huge key to what got them there, of course, led by potentially Buck Buchanan Award winner Troy Anderson at that linebacker spot. He has been uh, just elite. I have the Buck Buchanan Award preview linked at the end of the video. Go check it out. I, I'm I'm, I'm going to assume Anderson should win it for Montana State. So that's why this matchup is so important. When you look at North Dakota State offensive line, they've won the offensive line award multiple times this season. They're number one in the FCS in total rushing yards, yards per rush, and top two in rushing touchdowns this season, along with ranking top 20 in sacks allowed. And just the pure size of this offensive line is something else. 
Cordell Volson, 6'7", 313, has been a star on the offensive line for this team. Also, Cody Motch, the senior, 6'6", 301. Kubis, Nash, both over 300 pounds, and Mason Miller, a sophomore, finding his way to contribute a lot, 6'6", 292. These guys are mean. They're physical. They execute on a high level, and the chemistry is there in terms of the offensive line execution down the stretch through the playoffs. So if this offensive line can establish their will and on top of that help protect Cam Miller when he takes the shots, that's going to go a long way in helping North Dakota State win this game. And the number one thing is those guards, tackles, the center has to get to the next level. The number one thing for Montana State you see on film is if you don't get a hand on their linebackers, it's going to be a long day. South Dakota State, a great rushing team, was not able to work up to the second level as well due to the physicality and athleticism of the linebackers of Montana State because Anderson can fly. You know, former running back, former quarterback, if you can't get a hand on him, He's going to the football, and he's getting there very, very fast, and he's going to wreak havoc when he gets there. So the number one thing for North Dakota State is you have to work to that second level, get a hand on these linebackers, and allow your running backs to even have a chance to get upfield. And that's going to be a big key for North Dakota State in this matchup. Now, this front seven, I'm going to say is one of the most athletic front sevens in the FCS. And the X factor, of course, I've mentioned on Troy Anderson, 137 total tackles, 14 for loss, two sacks, two picks, seven pass breakups. If he plays lights out this weekend, then Montana State has an outstanding chance. And he's going to be the key to stop in the run game due to his speed at the linebacker spot. If you were talking about a linebacker who can play sideline to sideline, that is Troy Anderson because he is just so athletic, so quick and agile that he really offers a, a unique challenge to off to offensive lines, offensive coordinators, because he can beat you to the spot. If you take a false step, if you take a bad drop as an offensive lineman or you don't step the right way, he's going to beat you into the gap just because he's so fast and he has the size to also punish you when he gets into the gap as well or gets his hands on you. So that's going to be a key here is can Troy Anderson wreak havoc like he has been all year and his partner in crime, Callahan O'Reilly, the linebacker, 85 total tackles, forced fumble, three pass breakups, and two interceptions. He's also going to be a huge factor for this Montana State team, and this linebacking duo is going to be a problem for North Dakota State if they don't work up to that second level. And, of course, the guy – this this guy, I don't think gets enough credit. Daniel Hardy, defensive end, 16 sacks, 23 tackles for loss, nine QB hurries, two forced fumbles, 71 total tackles. Daniel Hardy is going to have to get upfield and create some havoc. Early in the game, James Madison was able to get upfield, get into the backfield of North Dakota State and cause that offense some problems. Now, later in the game, North Dakota State was able to adjust, and it just seemed like James Madison ran out of gas down the stretch. Now, Daniel Hardy, Amandre Williams are going to have to play big time football this weekend for Montana State. If they can't wreak havoc in the backfield, there's it's going to be very tough to beat this North Dakota State team. They're going to have to play solid in the run game. But when Cam Miller backs up to pass, Hardy and Williams have to be there and cause some havoc because that's one thing James Madison was not able to do down the stretch. And of course, this defense has been so opportunistic. Eight interceptions, six fumble recoveries, less than 13 points per, points per game allowed, and less than 300 yards of total offense per game allowed. And that's in large part due to how physically dominant their front seven is. And so that is going to be a huge matchup to watch come Saturday in Frisco, Texas. Now, I've been back and forth on this game, man. And listen, I want to say this before I make my prediction. Thank you to all the Montana State fans, all the North Dakota State fans that have reached out to me and tried to sway me either way, man. I appreciate y'all's interaction with the show, and I appreciate y'all rocking with me on all our FCS content. So thank y'all so much. And so, you know, I've been riding with, you know, I picked Montana State these past two weeks, including their upset over Sam Houston. I've been riding with them really hard. I mean, Tommy Malott deserves all the credit in the world. But right now, man, I just feel like the moment for North Dakota State is there. I think this team has a chip on their shoulder because there's been a narrative that last season they got exposed and they didn't, they weren't able to finish the job and FCS catching up to them. I think this team is ready to go make a statement. I think they got some key players coming back, and I just think their versatility at the running back spot and their depth 
is going to be the difference along with their offensive line just establishing their will. And so I'm going to go in a close game. I don't think the spread should be as high as it is. Eight points seems like a lot to me. I'm going to go with a low-scoring game, back-and-forth physical game because both teams are going to try to run the football. And I just think North Dakota State is going to limit explosive plays, and that secondary is going to force one turnover to win the football game. I have North Dakota State winning the 2021-2022 FCS National Championship 21-17, to a four-point win for the Bison over Montana State. I think this game is a 50-50 game. I love this national championship matchup, man. But I'm going to go with the Bison by four points this Saturday in Frisco, Texas. Now, guys, I want to get y'all score predictions in. This is our game of the week, of course. We will do a live stream Thursday night at 6.30 p.m. Central Time in which we are going to re-preview this game. I want to get you guys to, you know, potentially call in, comment your score predictions, your breakdown of the game. And we will and I want I want to get all y'all's takes on the game. So make sure to subscribe, tune into that, set up your post notifications. That way, as soon as we go live, you know I'll post in all the FCS groups as well. And guys, but right now I got the bison by four. So until Thursday night, man. Keep your predictions, comment them down below to, you know, it's a placeholder, but make sure to tune in Thursday night to discuss all things for the FCS National Championship in Frisco on Saturday, man. But I appreciate y'all support. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And man, until next time, guys, the Blue Bloods are out.